Ivan, Ivan Garzon. Now we'll start off. <coughs> start off with a Sicilian. He's playing a uh, c3 Sicilian. So I like to attack the pawn with my knight since he can't defend it with a knight and see, see how he reacts. I'm not actually threatening to take it because of this trick. Queen comes here with a check and wins the knight. But uh, after, after a knight or bishop develops here, then you are threatening to take it. So maybe he's looking for a useful move that he can play <laughs> that will allow me to uh, fall into his trap. Yeah. See, now the trick is still on, right? The queen could still check here and pick up the knight if I take it. But after I go here, then... Uh... Oh, he also defended it. Okay. It was defended already, but he defended it again. Anyway, this is a good developing move, so... Should be okay. I could... Go for Fianchetto and try to counter this uh, d4 square. Counter the pressure on the d4 square there. Let's um, let's wait a little bit. How about I just uh, develop the queen side here, put a rook opposite his queen, and then then take, because I would actually threaten to win a pawn. <laughs> this queen over here is not defending the d pawn. He could have pushed the deep on and forced me to move this knight. And it probably has to just go back. So now I'm threatening to take a pawn here. So I take. He takes. I take. I could take with the pawn, right? If he took with the knight, then I could take back. See, I take, he takes with the pawn. Oh yeah, and then I take and I'm hitting the queen. So if he takes with the knight, he loses the knight. If he takes with the pawn, then what's the best move? I mean, I could also go here and then take the bishop. He has to move his queen. So that would net me the, the bishop pair. But um, the other way nets me a pawn, so. Oh, he's thinking about it. Of course, he could ignore me and just push, yeah. Why not? So if I take, it just helps him develop. I'll develop my uh, dark squared bishop now. And get castled. He's still not threatening to take, so he is threatening to push my knight around. But now I can go here, and then it's not so bad for me to take with a pawn. Oh, he takes with a knight. I see. I see. Let's keep on developing, though. The line I was really afraid about before was him taking with the uh, knight here. And doubling my e-pawns, opening up the d-file prematurely. So he didn't like me taking his bishop. Interesting. Yeah, so if he had played f, f4 there, I would have taken his bishop. But uh, let's get castled. The knight can go to <coughs> c4 as well. Should it go to c4? Let's see, this pawn is only defended by the queen at the moment. 
So if I could distract the queen in some way. Not really seeing it. You know, let's put the knight up here. Kind of keeps his pieces bottled up a little bit. Could maybe put some pressure on this pawn. See, knight here, I take here. Takes back with a pawn, then I get a free move with my knight. Yeah, let's try this. <clears throat> So he kicks it, but uh, that just falls to a fork here. Forking the queen and the rook. And if he takes the uh, replacement knight, continues to fork. So he was... He resigned there. Yeah, he was thinking about his moves. It was interesting. He was not moving too quickly. In fact, he's moving quite slowly. We're only on move 14, and he's used up most of his time. Um, but if we go back to the opening, this is a standard Alapin Sicilian. This is a normal move. You can see it's about even. Can you see that? No, the evaluation doesn't show up. But anyway, it's it's evaluated as zero zero by the computer and uh, this move still still about even so it's not terrible but uh, maybe slightly preferable to develop another piece this is interesting how does this trick work like that. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cute. So he can even develop the bishop here and seemingly interfere with the... But he did this. That was okay. Let's see. Didn't, didn't like my knight move. In fact, uh, yeah, so right here. Right here he should push. Because I don't really want to go here and have him trade knights and give me this weird doubled pawn. Um, so if he pushed... I'd probably retreat. It says I could also go here, but that's eh, good for good for white. So after this, what should I have done? I should have played up here and blocked it. Okay, but I didn't. Just developed, and uh, I continued developing. He still got this advantage, and then that was uh, where I get an advantage. So this move. Yeah, because I can just take this pawn. And then you saw what happened from there. Okay, well, let's get another game. Good, good start to this session. And I hit the wrong button there. I thought I said uh, new opponent. I must hit analysis instead of new opponent. But, of course, it's a windmill. He can wipe out all my pawns first and then pick up a rook, so. Izmir starts off with d4. Let's play e5. 1873, so strong player. <clears throat> I'm going to play the Rui Lopez. So I'll show you the way I like to play it, if he gives me the chance. Ah, he plays the four knights. Well, there's nothing wrong with the four knights. Four knights Spanish, or the four knights Scotch, yeah, are the main moves here. This is the four knights Scotch. I think you take with the pawn. He pushes. You can take, he can take. I mean, the other idea is take with the knight. 
he takes. And it's nice left hanging there. Yeah, I guess you have to take with a pawn. And he just takes back. Okay, so a simple trade. So I take, or do I develop the queen? When by taking, I develop his queen is what I mean. How about I pin his knight? And if he takes, I'll take with the B pawn here rather than allow the queen trade. And get castled. Now the queen trade is not so scary because I can take back with the rook. The queen trade is particularly bad when you're... Um... Okay, so I could take his knight now and we'd both have the same open... Um... open B file. Gonna try and blockade this pawn. I think this is a case where I really need to uh, break the pin forcefully by whatever means. So yeah, knight back here was my idea and then get it to this square. Yeah, he's going to stop me by whatever means. Okay, so I need to get my queen into the action here somehow. because his queen was threatening to come out and deliver a devastating check. I want to get my king up to uh, uh, g7 here. I want to get this move in, but if I played it right away, then he had the, the queen check. So now I can play it. Now I can bring rook over to defend if I need it, and I can also Bring my knight out to here. So knight here, he plays the rook here. Oh, no, then I can take the rook, yeah. Bishop oh, unlashes the, unleashes the bishop on this square. Yeah, and then, um, his bishop conveniently is uh, blocked by his own pawn here. So let's get my bishop off the back rank and oppose rooks here. I think I'm kind of scrambling just to uh, survive here, but if I survive, then I'm okay, right? I'm hitting this pawn for what it's worth. Probably not a whole lot. Let's see, so I put my rook here. He takes, I take, he takes, he, a check, and then I just lift my rook up. So it's uh, just giving up the exchange, isn't it? I mean, maybe it's worth it to him to give up the exchange here. But uh, I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> yeah, the 
king ran away from the pen there. Maybe he's preparing to uh, chase my uh, chase my queen away. Kind of wanted to play my queen to here, but he could just put his rook back there and it didn't seem to accomplish much. So I thought maybe if I doubled my rooks first and then played that. <clears throat> so he is, he's preparing to uh, defend that point. Defend it at all odds. Okay, so here. He's been backed into a defensive position here. I, I like this for me. So this is the question. Do I take with the rook or the pawn here? I think I take with the rook. <clears throat> Now, maybe I just take this pawn or I go after this one. I'm going to push my uh, H pawn, try and loosen up the area around his king. He's going to get this pawn back, right? <laughs> Should I defend it? I guess I could defend it like this. He had C4 trapping the bishop. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's true. Good point. Okay, so I take here. If I drop back, he plays c4. So I think I am forced to take. So we're going to get into a, a series of uh, mopping up actions, right? He's going to take here. Oh, he takes there. Not what I was expecting, but yeah, okay, it's a free pawn. Okay, so I was going to attack here. And go after the pawns on the king side still. Yeah, after the game, we can look at uh, c4, see if it uh, wins. I thought uh, <clears throat> Oh, yeah, his bishop was still there. That's right. So c4 supported by the bishop. Maybe there was a way out of it. Well, Izmir is, is uh, really thinking here. I don't know. Is it really so bad if he just starts uh, taking pawns? Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, so what is this? Oh, uh, I have the outside passer here. This one's for me, I think. Yeah, he's outside the square of the pond. He is not getting there in time. Okay, but this is not... Um, <clears throat> not going to go anywhere. <laughs> okay, okay, he wants to... He wants to play. Here, I just wanted to get my queen to this square. And bring my king up over here. There we go. Well, that was nice. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you're right that I made a mistake there. Let's turn this on. Yeah, plus two. Yeah, how's my poor bishop ever getting out of that? I can defend it this way and he can start mopping up pawns, so it's still going to be good for white. So if we back up, what was my move here instead of uh, doing that? Yeah, so it's even. It's still even at this point. So, yeah, I played a decent game, I think. That one blunder there could have cost me, but uh, other than that, I played pretty good, it seems. It seemed to me. Let's get somebody new here. Back to E4. Ah, a Philidor defense. No, oh, that's considered bad. But I don't remember all the tricky lines here, so I think I'm going to ignore that. You can, I believe, just sacrifice the knight there. Because you take, he has to take with a pawn. The queen comes out with check. If he blocks, then you've got take here, check, and take rook. So after the check, he has to move the king. You want to try it? We'll try it. Yeah, if you haven't seen that trick before, it is it is kind of cute. But uh, yeah, he can move his king. I can bring my bishop out with check. Got to got to have quick development. But I don't know uh, how it will go from there. He can bring his knight out to block the check. So he ran there, so I don't develop my. Uh, 
light squared, my dark squared bishop a check, but I can develop my light squared bishop here. I can also come in with the queen. Let's develop this here first. Queen can come in with check and then you have this check here. So I could check from here. Let's uh, castle though. Bring my rook out with check. Bishop here, interesting. Okay, so he's going for the, not to allow that. So what does he do with bishop here? I guess he goes queen there. Queen here, check. King can't go here, has to go here, and then you can take this bishop. Yeah, it's one of those cases where these, these uh, <clears throat> fast developing bishops are more powerful than the knights, which are a little slower than to get into the game, but this knight coming in here will be strong too when it happens. Yeah, so I thought I could just go here. There's no way to block the check. He can't go here. He's got to go here, and then I can take here with check. That's probably mate. Oh, he goes there. Yeah, yeah, there's always that. There's always that. So is now the time to bring out the knight and then play the bishop check here? Well, I can take the bishop anyway. Yeah, let's not forget to do that. Ah, but if I take the bishop, he takes my bishop. Should be good anyway. And then uh, this one here. <clears throat> so pawn up, is that mate? He can actually go here, huh? I want pawn to uh, b4 to be mate. So I'm taking away this square from his king. <clears throat> and he doesn't like that idea, huh? I still want pawn to b4 to be mate. <laughs> He can develop his knight. He can. I'll have to take the rook, I guess. Or maybe, no, it's check here. If he develops the knight, then it's mate here. Because I got those squares covered. Okay, yeah, I think mate is unavoidable now. If he doesn't develop the knight, then I have pawn here, which is mate after the exchange. That's cute.
and he resigned. Yeah, let's uh, put it on the analysis board and just show you a couple of things he could try here. It's a mate in four, <laughs> starting with queen takes g2. <laughs> yeah, that's just a waste of time. Okay, mate in three. So uh, knight f6. B4 check, take, take, and that's the mate, one of the mates. Okay, so uh, bishop f8. Why? Oh, because it gives him an escape square here. I didn't think of that one. Bishop f8, but this fails to queen takes. King here. And bishop here, king here, and pawn here as <laughs> mate. <laughs> That's cute. And then uh, aside from bishop f8, we've also got bishop e7. Okay, so that'd be the same thing. And then the other thing I was mentioning was you do the knight here to prevent this uh, pawn from coming forward. Now, now you could do this, and it's not mate. Actually, it is, it's still mate, huh? <laughs> but there's a quicker mate, which is after the knight moves, you've got the queen there with the mate. It's a, a nice pattern with the pawn on c3 blocking those two squares. So let's back up. When I played pawn to c3, was that the best move there? It would play b4 check immediately. c3 was the second choice. So let's see, b4... He can't take, but he can run. Then I've got the rook here. And that it's mate. Because the king can't go here, here, or here because of my knight. And these squares are covered, and these squares are covered. Yeah, okay. So I didn't look ahead far enough on that path. That would have been fine, too. All right. Well, let's uh, get another game. Always good to have a nice tactical win like that in the session. New opponent. 